Welcome to our show. Welcome to Footy Express. Um, we have a, a great show lined up for you today. This is the first show that I'm doing independently. And our two guests for today is Lyle Lalas Peters and Theodore B. Hemper. We're going to have an interesting discussion on Lyle's experiences abroad and Theo's experiences as a player and a coach and what it takes to make it as a coach and what it takes to make it as a player in the highest league in South Africa. So, yes, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we know it takes out of your time, but we appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe the channel. Yes, please like the one with the thumbs up, not the thumbs down. So, um, would you just like to say hi to the people, Theo and Lau? I'll give it over to Mr. Theo first. Okay, respect. Hi, Lee. Good evening, Jonathan, um, Lau, and everyone listening in, everyone that's that's clicked on. So I hope you're going to enjoy the show. So we hopefully I can give you some information and hopefully well, once the show is done, then everyone has a better idea of what it takes to, to make it as a professional footballer and also what, what you need now to put that extra uh -huh. in so that you can make it a little bit easier for you. Hey. Hi there, uh, Ms. Lyle Peters. Um, I would like to say thanks again to Jonathan for allowing me to be on the show and, and Theo also. Um, I would want to do actually be a player under Coach Theo at the time. <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, football changes things. <laughs> um, but I just want the people to, you know, know what's happening around in the football world and my experience that I had. And I like to share my experience to all the youngsters out there so that they know what's the up and downs and how things operate out there. Brilliant. And that's exactly my thought. That's exactly why I joined the show. That's why I want to do what I want to do is you guys summed it up that hopefully after these types of discussions that people have or kids or parents or coaches have a better understanding of the game, better understanding of what it takes to play this game. And yeah, just with more insight and more knowledge, as they knowledge is power. So with more of that knowledge, you're able to make better decisions. So thank you very much, guys, for joining us today. We will go straight into it before we go straight into it. If you do have comments, please comment on the side and um, our esteemed guests will be able to answer uh, your questions. So Lal, you sent me a, a lengthy voice note. And um, just about your career, I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed listening to it. <laughs> I think what came out from it was that it takes perseverance to make it. You started at 15. I think you went to um, what, as a 15-year-old. And yeah. that's the Joburg on your own. And then I just want to fast forward it. You at Ajax. You went to PE. And I want to fast forward it a bit to when you got this break in Iman, am I correct? It's Iman? Yes, Iman, yes, Iman, yeah. Yeah, so take us through this break that you got, the um, break that you got in Iman, specifically the first three days that you were there. You only had money for three days, so maybe take us from <laughs> Oh, well, um, yeah. It was a, a bit of a, a traumatizing experience, to put it that way, coming off the flight. Um, not knowing who's what, where's what, then it's just Arabic, no English. And ending up there on the airport, asking the police, look, um, where do I go? Where do I go from here? They explained to me, look, you have to go over there. I stand, I go there, get to the lady. The lady tells me, look, um, he has no visa. Sure. I'm like, no sure. visa. I'm like, um, but I'm here for the month on a visiting visa. So that means my agent didn't organize anything and bear in mind, I could not connect to the Wi-Fi, neither could I get hold of my agent through the network because of Telcom, MTN, uh, CLC, Vodacom, I can't. So I had to ask someone for the phone and phone my agent, agent don't pick up and I'm there stranded for almost an hour 
they don't know what to do, how to do what. And then I asked this lady, look, is there no way I can get in here now? So she's like, um, look, uh, there is, but it's going to cost you a fee. And I just took a small amount of money with me. Bear in mind that, uh, you know, I'm just going there. And I to get a struggle to even get my, my, my flight fees. Because obviously I needed to borrow money at the time. And I told myself, hey, I need to pay those people back. Young. So for yeah. me to make it, yeah, I need to pay them back. If I come back without anything, I'm in debt. You understand? So I was already there on the airport. Um, spoke to the lady. She tell me, look, so, so much. And Umani Real, as he, at that, that time, it hit about, what, 36 rand? 36 rand, one real. And they talking about, like, 50 reals. They talking about... So much now, 50, we, I don't have like a thousand rand, two thousand rand straight up front cash to say, yeah, you understand? And they talk about um, uh, seven days. They tell me, mm. look, I was in, what's the lowest? They say the three days. Three days was mm. 500 and something. And then I was like, what do I do if I get those three days here? And I don't know when we're going to look at the outside. I don't know who's here waiting for me. But I took the gamble. I said, you know what? Let me just get through those gates. And once I'm in the country, and I'm out of the out of the airport. I can sort my life out where whoever I need to meet, I will message. I will just, you know, I'll find a way. Always the police will always help you out if you not if you don't know what to do. So I yeah. took that and I went through the gates. I came across a guy called Salah. Not Mo Salah though, but um Salah. <laughs> <laughs> and and he was like, Look, uh Lyle. I'm like, yes. And then I told him, Look, I paid now for three days. I'm here for the month for training. What is happening? He did not uh, understand what I was saying. So yeah. I had to go Google Translate and I asked him, look, do you have a phone? Do you have daughter? I'm like, daughter, daughter. I show him on my phone. My daughter is dead. I can't do anything. He's like, he gives his phone. I said, Google Translate. I type in there. The phone is in Arabic also. I'm like, oh, what do I do now? I can't read Arabic. I'm showing Google, 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 Translate, Translate. He said, yes, yes, yes. He, all he's saying is yes, yes, but he's not understanding. <laughs> Uh, and then eventually, <laughs> eventually I got it over him where I was telling him what it was. He's like, no, no worry, don't worry. We sort it out, we sort it out. And from there, I was like a relief. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to choke my agent now if I'm going to get hold of him. <laughs> so you fast, fast forward a bit, you're busy playing, but you don't get paid for three months. How do you yep. continue playing? I was there. Um, the first few, even the first game with experience of that, we were like, what? Eight players on training. The league mm. is in the start this week. We still eight players on training. I get yeah. to the airport. I get to the airport. I find with 25. I'm like, where the where, where do these players come from? They got training kit. They got everything. But where do these people come from? And at the moment, I was playing right wing. I wasn't playing my natural position as a as a top striker. I was playing right wing. And the right back as in the first eleven. I don't know his name. I don't know who he is. I don't know what he expects, how he wants me to actually play and whatever. But he could speak English. And it was a good um, translation with him between the two of us because he was the number one right back in Oman in the country. So he okay. got a fair share of being around playing in, in uh, Asian Cups and stuff. So he could speak English and we got away with murder that way. But we could Hi. speak to each other and could relate. Look, what do you want? What do you expect I should do? Because I don't know you. And it was uh, quite difficult. Uh, um, but then from there, we kicked off, got a bit better. And as the months went on, we didn't get paid the first month. I was like, hey, what's going on? And everything the people was talking about, money at least I heard. I listened and I heard one word was flus. And flus was uh, money in Arabic. So uh, when I heard flus, I was like, um, sorry, what's happening? Because I know you're uh -oh. still talking about money now, so we hear about the money issue. Uh -oh. And from there, uh, we never got paid for three months, and I needed to send money home because I got a small little family, my son and my girlfriend and so on, so I needed to uh, send money home and to my parents also. So how do I do that? I had to please mm -hmm. explain to them what is happening. Got phone calls with the agent. Agent said, don't worry, they'll sort you out. They'll pay you, they'll pay you, they'll pay you. And now mm -hmm. it's emotionally breaks you down because... You're forever stressing about the money issue, knowing that you need to carry on with the football. So you needed to be strong. I needed to, you know, put that aside and keep going, knowing that there is something better to pop up. And it was coming December, it was Christmas, and still no money at that time until, what, February when we got paid. But then we got paid in a big lump sum amount of money also. Okay. So... Your story, a lot of people, and we probably don't have the time to share it. I think that's been 
if if you agree, I think that would be describe sort of your football journey, just um, crazy perseverance. Uh, a lot of things knock you down, but you're able to get up again and you're able to get going and you're able to get going again. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Definitely, yes. Um, because, I mean, like, with other players would have said, I want to go home. You know what yeah. I mean? I was like, look. Absolutely. Okay, but the good thing was we got uh, food at the restaurant. So, I mean, like, I didn't have to pay for my food and the okay. place I was staying. So, I never paid for rent. I never paid for food. So, that was the, the bonus part of it after all. Yeah. And that's what they always said. They said, look, you got your shelter. You got your food. So, yeah. why you complain? Don't complain. You know what I mean? And, yeah, you just have to work like a slave, basically. Because... Mm. No, the thing is, you want to send money home, so you're stressing every month, knowing yeah. you don't have money on you here, and they're not giving me. I need to pay my flight people back. Yeah. So that was another thing in my in my in mind of that, because at the time I was I was in a struggle to get the cash. Theo, would you say? Can you relate to that story? Can you relate to Lyle's I, I think, journey? I think it it is definitely not dissimilar to a lot of. South Africans, I think maybe some of them haven't gone overseas, but I know it has personally happened with a lot of people that I know in South Africa where they find themselves having to travel alone, maybe to Polokwane and to certain other places, and mm. then finding themselves stranded with no with mm. no bus, no with no traveling, with no money when mm. they get there. Also, they are always being kept in the dark from the mm. so-called agents. Um, you know, you've got a lot of unscrupulous people acting as agents also during that time. And also now, here and there, you'll still find some of those that they send the players, send the players somewhere and then without without any backup plan for the players if they do not make it. Or if the players get there, or what are they going to eat? Because they just send the players to the teams and then players find themselves stranded sometimes for weeks and end, and then players need to find money to get back to, to Cape Town. And I've, and I've heard so many of those stories from players that have coached personally as well. Mm -hmm. and, and isn't that sort of the story or the, 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 the idea that they give us? It's like, hey, you must be grateful. Be grateful yeah. for what you have. And do you think, do you think, I know for, for my own personal story, that's why I think it part part of it. I kept going. I kept going. You were in the limelight. You were getting. You know. You're playing. People are seeing you, and the sort of idea that you need be need to be grateful. Do you think that sort of plays some part in our identity to keep going? Yeah, yeah, yes, I, I do. I do. I do agree with you to a certain extent. But I also think uh, it, it depends if you are a player that is popular, a player that is well known, then you would probably be able to, to persevere. But if you are a young player like Lyle, and I've got fantastic respect for him just for persevering, because not a lot of players would have endured all that and then still try to make it. Absolutely. You know, some players they would have just given up, but probably the first or the second day. And mm. and it's, it, I think it depends. And but now you've got a lot of young players. They've never probably been out of Cape Town. They mm. are seen there. And, mm. and I hear stories about players. Maybe they get there and they find themselves in or in the bush. And, and then maybe there's a little bit of a hut or a couple of dwellings up there. And there's no, just a bed in there. But they don't know what's happening. They don't know where they're going to find food. So those are the kind of scenarios that you always find yourself in South Africa, particularly. So Lyle... Um, that's a massive um, mental strength that you've shown for both as a professional footballer and also for someone that really wanted to make it and a fantastic example to a lot of our young players. Brilliant, brilliant. So, thanks, coach. Yeah, go now, you go, you go. I wanted to say just so thanks, coach. Thanks for that. When, brilliant. When Lau told me his story, that's the first thing that came to my mind is the, the level of perseverance is insane the level of perseverance I know when I went for my first trial at Supersport I was a homesick I came home I did learn from it but his mindset is another level and I think that, that that is what it takes that part of what you need to have to make it as a footballer to make it as a coach do you think um, in the coaching world it's any different do you think you need more of that perseverance you, you, you talked about Maybe I've been getting used to the way things are. What do you think? 
I think the first thing that you want is you want the players to be comfortable when they do come for trials, regardless if they have everything or nothing. I, I can remember specifically me giving players personally money to go and buy food because you, the, the first people the players go to is the coach. A coach, I've got nothing to eat and the players are not going to perform or train well if they have not had something to eat or if they worry constantly about no. where they're going to sleep and other things. So you want the players to be to be nice and, and, and relax. You want the players to be happy when it comes there, whether he makes it or not. But you want the player to take something away from where he is. And obviously, listen to other people know it. So they were handled well. They were treated well. So, um, but that's such a, it's such a common, common Cape story. Not just in, not just from Cape Town boys, but also from people in, people in South Africa in general. And, uh, and, uh, and the other thing that also always struck me is players from Cape Town, they, 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 they can make it. They've definitely got the talent. But um, it's just that things are always so comfortable there for so for Lyle to endure all that months and that and to and to stay there. I think because we as Cape, Cape Town Cape, Cape Town players, we just know we can go home and things will be okay. So oh. Lyle, I, uh, that's a lot of plus points for you, and you show that our young people really the, the way forward. Because sometimes you're going to find yourself in strange situations, in strange countries even. And then you have to show that you have to show that you made more out of more than just comfort and, comfort and being in the comfort zone. Mm. Yeah. Because I could also say same with experience like that, with what Theo was saying. Um, same thing was happening in Free State at African Warriors, mm. um, where me and all and Paul, we went to go play at African Warriors. Mark Harrison was a coach there. Same thing happened there. You end up there. You don't know what is going on. You know, um, you had an uh, owner there. And he didn't really worry much. He just like, look, um, I'm paying you, so you need to sort yourself out. So, man, all I had to do, you know, utmost best to try the best we could. Where it was food and stuff. Because you also never got paid for another few months. And then that was another issue. Where we had to scrap out our loss just to buy something, just to eat for tonight. Go to training in the morning. The coach used to motivate us and say, look, let's push at the side and just come to training, man. Because it was a time that we didn't want to. We were like, you know what? We're not going to go train because look how they're treating us here. And it's not good. It's not the healthy for the brain. It's not the healthy for the body. If you don't get your proper nutrition and stuff into your body to train the energy, your mind is gone. You just don't feel for it anymore. So that's also a point that, of course, you know, what happened with me also. So I could speak on that. It's pretty much the same. Um, what would you do? You think I, I have a question for you, Lyle, from a player's point of view, and then I have a question for you, Theo, from a management point of view. What do you think? Do you think you would have done anything different as a player, experiencing all these things? And I, I'm not taking anything from that away from your mindset. Your your mindset is insane. That perseverance and that I believe is going to help you a lot in life, but. Is there something that you would do differently as a player from what you know now in those situations? If, yeah, to say if I knew all of this, you know, if someone could uh, give it to you before the time, give you the ground points and the grassroots to say, look, this is what it is. This is what's going to take. This is what's going to happen. So you are already aware of something. So you would obviously make it a better, um, a better life for you by then. You prepare your mind, you prepare your body, you prepare everything much better than what you don't know. So as a player, I think with being there, if I had to be in that shoes with knowing the knowledge that I know now, I would probably be much better off, you know. Um, I just, you know, certain things happen during your, your career. Of course. Where you end up having injuries, you end up having this, you end up having that. And then that's the the... the, the the shit that puts you down, but that's how you get up again. So, I mean, like, it was a bit difficult, and if I knew it, I probably would have been on a different space right now. Do you think you would prepare differently, um, not saying totally leave football, because that's something that we love to do, I mean, we all love yeah. playing, but do you think you'd prepare differently academically, educationally, side hustle-wise, or something like that? Yeah, most definitely, because at the time, um, like I said, when I was even at Ajax, I had a decision signing by the first team. I was either I carried on going to school or signing to the PSL. 
and that was a decision I had to make. And then obviously I was in grade 11 at the time and I never finished school due to football also. And I mean, like, I don't, I'm not disappointed of and course. it's not a relief. You know, it's a 50, 50 situation It's either you carry on being a footballer or you're going to have to do something on the side. And then it was also difficult for me to do my studies. I tried and I just it didn't work out properly for me because I was too, too, how can I say, too distracted with the football. Every time I wanted to do something, something else popped up, you know, um, where owners wasn't being good to us at all. And you end up leaving, going to another club in the next six months. You um leaving in the next year. So you were never... How can I say you are never properly situated where you can actually put your 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 head on the block and say, "Look, I'm ready now." You see, so at this point, where the career is is not difficult, it's not the same where the education is involved. Um, I just now that I can have more opportunity on my hands now than what I had before, because that time it was an up and down situation. So, yeah, like I said, it would have been different with the education one in my part. I think it's a brilliant answer because you are right. You trying to focus on this career and you have your dreams. And mm. if it keeps getting broken up, it's hard to focus on something else. It's hard to bring the two focus together or two yeah. um, two things together. It's not very easy to do. So, um, yeah, I think it's a brilliant answer. Tyron Aronser, one of our friends that we played with that we know very well. <laughs> it's a great chat, Tommy. Young players can learn a lot from Theo and Niles knowledge and experience. Absolutely. I think from Tyron Aronser's knowledge and experience also. Lishan Rose has a question and I think I'll propose to Theo. What motivation would you give guys coming from our younger generation out of the ranks? Um, I, didn't, I didn't hear the last part of the question. Sorry, what motivation, what motivation? Is younger, younger, younger kids coming up? I, th- I, th- I think, I think um, the, the, especially the, stu- the, the players that I have currently training with me, I always encourage them just to, to go and try and get their studies, try and, 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 and get your academics. Um, football in South Africa, although it, it, it promises a lot, but it, in the end of the day, it is very disappointing. Even even if you have been in football for a number of years, and I think we always see a lot of examples. Sometimes you just see a clip of maybe a, a very important player who played for Sundowns, and you see in the township what he looks like. And so, and I think over the years, there's there's just so been so many examples. And I I remember briefly me and you, Jonathan, we discussed it last week. Just for in, in a, a just we just mentioned it. How disappointing it is just to see how many of our ex players are actually not doing anything. They 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 struggling and some because it's difficult for them to adapt. And I think we never had the the, the idols and the role models. I think when we started football, professional football, that's the first thing. We never had those players that that, that we had never had the reference actually. We we saw the players play and then because we just wanted to play, we never had Okay, when you fall back, what are you going to fall back? So many of us, we learned that lesson very, very late. So for now, the first thing that I encourage all my parents, when I bring the students, they bring the kids to me to come and let them focus on their studies because end of the day, that is the first thing that's going to help you. The football is always going to be there. You're always going to love it. But if you if you struggle when you are done with football, you then you're always going to have that and you do not want to have that regrets that many of our footballers have. So, amazing, amazing discussion. This is something that I've been thinking about as well, I, when I knew I was going to talk to the two of you and including myself, that the football industry, I always, when I speak to people, I tell them it's almost like the Wild West. You don't know what's going on. Amalus Volta, Bungus Volta, guys pulling out guns here, yeah, you're signing blank contracts, it's crazy. And I thought oh. about I thought about Theo's situation in 2014. I think he just started coaching. He took Milano from the Vodacom. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Took Milano from the Vodacom to the NFD. Came to the NFD promotional playoffs. And that's a big, big deal. Came to the NFD promotional playoffs. And I think it was the following season or the season after that that they let you go. I'm not sure. Lyle, you know a lot um, when you're on top of your game. Suddenly you're out of the team. Suddenly the coach is gone. I know it. 
So oh. it's such a crazy, it's such a crazy industry to be in, and a lot, a lot of people think that. I thought of if if Theo was a teacher and he got um, Teacher of the Year award, we know there's a progression of HOD next, deputy principal next, principal next. But in football, you can win, literally come to the promotional playoffs to go into the PSL and let go a season or two after that. So. It is a very insecure industry that we in. Do you guys maybe want to speak to that or comment on that? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the, the 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 first point that you that you mentioned here, it's that 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 already it says. So I am so um. Sometimes you 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 sit and think and you and you don't actually know why we are actually in the situation that we are. Um, um Jonathan. But um, I think the first thing that we I, I first want to hear Lyle from a from a players because Lyle is basically still playing, and then I'm going yeah. to comment from a coach's perspective. Take over and the show, take, well. over, take over the show, please. <laughs> so Johnny, just repeat again, there quickly, man. So I say the industry is like the wild west. You can be at the top of your game, but like you say, then another coach comes in, or you. Yeah, you something happens that you unaware of. So it there's so much insecurity around the game. Maybe you want to comment around that. How does the yeah? Your performance. That's a, that's a, that was a perfect. That's a perfect question for me. It happened um, at Ajax for me. That um, well, I was at Ajax in the PSL with Fopadan, and we lost out on the league um, with two Pirates. We lost two one. If I'm correct, either two one or two 0 against Maritzburg. On Cape Town Stadium, and the league went to Pirates. That was 2010, if I must be correct. Um, mm-hmm. So from there, I picked up an injury also. I had a meniscus repair, and I was in a meeting six months later. I came back. I was okay now. From there, I had a meeting with um, with Martin Stefflenburg, and as I had a meeting, he told me, "Look." Um, we no more need your service anymore. We can send you on loan or something like that. And I was like, look, it's fine. Um, you can give my clearance and things. I'll I'll find my way. You know, I don't want to go on loan due to something like this now. And then, you know, the club end up sometimes they benefit or they don't also. You see, so mm-hmm. now you're just throwing me away. And now mm-hmm. you want something maybe out of it. So I was like, you know what? Give my clearance. I'll go wherever I needed to go. Then at the end of it, I left. And I left to Santos. While I was at Santos, I heard that Martin Stegenberg became the head coach. So, I mean, like, so you knew you the head coach actually all along. I just, you could have told me personally, I said, look, you're loud. Um, not to spoil the beans, but I'm taking over in the PSL for Badan, retired, and I no more need your service. Then I would have respected more, you understand? There was nothing I don't, like, nothing against anything like that, but it would have been much uh, uh, decent as a footballer to understand it better that way. Then I would say, okay, thanks, coach, not a problem. And then I thought, look, let me go to Santos, see what I can do at Santos, get the PSL contract there or something, and prove Ajax again wrong. It's the same mm. thing I did in my in my junior career, where mm. I went on trial as an open trial to Ajax. It was under mm. 50. And I went up all the way into making it as an open trial, right through up training with the team. Duncan Crowe was a coach at the time. And he told me, look, um, we're not going to take on anybody. So, I mean, like, my time got wasted for three months of trialing. I could have been somewhere else. But then again, with that mindset, I said, I'm going to all mutual so that I can play mm-hmm. against Ajax. And then still mm-hmm. prove my point again there, whether I, whether mm-hmm. I was right or wrong, but I'm going to prove my point. So, I had that mentality from that level already. That's why, for me, going to Oman, and that it was a, not a difficult task to play it off, but I already had that mentality. Look, I'm not going to give up. I'm here already. Why do I have to give up? I chose to be a footballer. It's too late to give up now. Otherwise, yeah. you could have given up a long time in, in your junior, junior career and so forth. Yeah. So that is my experience. Also, I had so experience where a new coach comes in, new coach goes. Sometimes when a new coach comes, yeah. it gives you actually a motivation where you become one of the best under him. Yeah. Without knowing yeah. the coach, he brings you out the best. He, he believes in you. He gives you the opportunity. And you're just a different player because every time a new coach comes, you have to prove yourself. No matter what. Yeah. You can't think, yeah. I'm in. You know, the coach come here, he said, look, um, I'm fresh, I'm new, I'm looking for a new first eleven. Finish show. Everyone proves himself on training and that's that's it. If he leaves, he leaves, he might leave with you. But that happened, Mark Harrison, he took me away again, he left with me. <laughs> he said, I'm going, I want you with. So there again, yeah. if a coach believes in you, he'll keep you going. 
So yeah. I think that yeah. that is from a player's player's experience. Yeah, I think I think the first thing I want to rectify, Jonathan, is um is um I was coach at uh, Milano from the eleven from the 2011, 2012 mm. season. Mm. So um, I think that's the first thing, and I th I think um having to, on this point. I think the similar thing happened to me also at Ajax while I was still a player. And I remember yeah. I did very well the first season when we became Ajax from Cape Town Spurs. And I went over to, to, to Ajax. And I, although I played in numerous different positions, and I, still, I was still one of the top, who I think I was second in the top scoring charts. Sometimes I played at the back, sometimes right back, sometimes midfielder. But I still, I still ended second in the scoring charts. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> so, so, Lyle, so Lyle, that's nothing new. Sometimes coaches, that is just... And then I found myself the next year, I, even though I still had a... Uh, but I, I just wanted to leave Cape Town. So um, so that was that was also a little bit of experience as a player. But well, I'm a coach's point of view. I think I always... Now, I've, since, since that, that episode at Milano, you know, you, you, you feel like you're on top and, and the team is progressing. Like I, I, I remember specifically how the team was progressing every single year. And the team that I worked with, I think probably 80% were under 23 players. And for us to, to yeah, probably 80% or 70% of that team was under 23 players. And I can remember every single one of them by name because we are, we are still in contact and we are still very close. So that was, it was always very good progression, but it was disappointing, I think. How it ended, and and um and I didn't actually wanted to. I never. That's why I never bad mouth. I never. I never like to look back on negative things. So therefore, if one door closes, I believe there's always going to be another one that's going to open for you. Especially if you are if you are on the right path and you are following the right methods, and people are looking up to you. So I think and I've been lucky in that in that sense where I always always seem to get a lot of a lot of good contacts, a lot of good people phoning me and people that still interested in what I'm doing. So Lyle, if you are, if people like, like you said, like that coach Mark Harrison, if people see something good in you and, and you know, and you're following the right path, there's always going to be a way open for you. Mm. Brilliant. So here's a question from Charlton Tommy. Um, I coached his son. He says, Hi, Johnny, why is there such little academy programs such as Ubuntu Football Academy? Charlton, I would say before maybe the other two answers, um, I would say if I take off from CO um, answer, I think when people see, you, you need to be able to see, once people see potential, so I think there's a lot of potential, but I think funding is the problem. I think there's a wealth of knowledge. I think there's a wealth of experience. But to start an academy is um, is not the easiest of things to do without the funding. So I think funding plays a big role. I think also from our discussion here, especially what I'm hearing from Theo, what he's doing is um, an exhibit is that you also have to have the right art. You have to be in it for the right reasons. You have to be in it for the correct reasons that you want to make an impact. Um, with the younger generation, you want to make an impact in society. So I think, um, yeah, when people see potential funding is probably a, 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 a big factor because you must understand um, everybody's trying to make a living. People work until five or six o'clock, so it's not easy to go back onto the field and, and work on a full-time basis. But I do think that we do need, need more football programs like Ubuntu Football Academy. What would you guys answer to Charlton's question? A uh, fantastic question, Charlton. Um, I, th I think uh, Charlton, um, uh, um, John, Johnny, Coach Johnny, or your Coach Johnny, uh, actually actually um, answered it already. The, the biggest part of it is the money factor. It is very expensive to run an academy, even academies such as Ajax and at the defunct Ajax now. But um, it is very expensive to maintain. Even the some of the I see there's a lot of um, potential uh, soccer schools that also want to open, or some some small coaching schools that is open. But it is a very expensive. That is why some of them just charge an exorbitant amount of money. Um, I I know I know personally, and but I've got a lot of got a lot of support. So therefore, but the thing and what I do is I try to do to, to put my packages. 
as small as possible. But because I I was a professional footballer, I played in the PSL for nine or ten years, if I'm not mistaken. And then I played also a couple of seasons NFD before I before I became a coach. So I have the knowledge of what it does take for players to to really become professionals. So therefore, that is what I install in all the players that I train, and they work really hard. But the things that we teach the players, so and there are a lot of guys just like me that I know personally in Cape Town that is very good. So you do not need to go sometimes to an academy, um, Charlton, if you want to get that that the right correct advice, get the correct training, and that. So sometimes you can just go as an individual as well. You don't. It can all belong to your team, but then. The fruits you will see when you perform for your team. So yeah, I just want to add on, sorry, um, that the uh, two points for me. I think we you we definitely have to start seeing the potential in each other. And once we start to see the potential in each other, I think things will start changing. We start to see the value. People start once you start to see value in people. There's more confidence. There's more. Yeah, there's more just about the vibe around it. And I do think that um, us as coaches in Cape Town have to upskill ourselves as well. So upskilling ourselves in 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 in, in coaching methodology, how to coach. Um, I the, the third point that I see is sometimes it's underestimated the amount of experience that that playing football gives you. So you have probably three people sitting here: the two, Lal and and Theo. Probably have about thirty years or more experience between them knowing. The different situations they were in, football situations, knowing the different relationships, football relationships that they were in. So I think you can't undervalue the amount of experience just playing um, football does bring. Um, Lal, anything from you on that? Yeah, the same. Um, like at the moment, I joined Exuberant. They also mm-hmm. were soccer schools, and the same thing as look, I came here to add value to Exuberant. And my experience, you know, to the youngsters out there that needs to know about, you know, the basics of the football, the cross root of football. Um, it's not easy just to say, I want to be a footballer. There's steps, there's methods, there's ways, there's means behind it. So I came to join them. And at the moment, look, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I have one on one session to it. Sorry, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry I, I, just, I think it's an important question. Theo can also give his input from Grant Gordon. How, sorry, Dav, I'm cutting you off there. I just I think fine. it's an important question. How important is parental support for a young footballer? Well, oh, it's, 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 it's very much important. It plays a bigger role. Actually, very, very big role. Because um, you look, if your parents and your and your, 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 guard, or your guard, guardly people, uh, they're supporting you. And being as a young footballer, you know, they need to be there also. They need to take you to the field, for example. Um, you know, watch everything, look what's happening. Not just leave you there and you should go on your own. You know, they should also see what effort you put in as a young footballer. So, for me, that's that's the utmost important thing is a parental part where they play a bigger role in your life as a, as a young footballer. Because once you get older... Your parents, they, they saw what you're doing. They know what you're doing. And now by there, it's all in your hands. Their duty has been done. I know personally on my, my mother was oh, every day on the field. And she was at training. She to drop me there and say, look, I will come fetch you after training. Because under the coach, I was also part of a family member. So I was well looked after there. But match day, she was there. And I know I was also asthmatic. When I was younger, so I had that asthma pump on the side every time I used to run and and you know what? For now, it look at paid off. I don't have asthma anymore. I outgrew mm-hmm. it. So that's a big role. That's a very big role. They should be there for you. Theo, thank you, Lyle. I, 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 Lyle, fantastic, fantastic point there as well. Um, um, I, I just can't express the, the support, the support factor from parents and family. How huge it is. I remember specifically at Milano, even though the team was very successful in the Mozepi League when we started first and we won the league and then we went over to the NFD, but um, we had so many players that came with social problems. Sure. And, and we know that players, they came from broken homes. 
Sure. So just imagine if they, if those players had the support from a young, and we knew, we know the players that came from areas such as Lavendale, Parkwood, Steenburg. We know how the social the social system is in those areas, and so they had to overcome a lot. But imagine sure. if those players had the support, the social structures from parents and family members from a young age, and they and they had the training and all that from a young age. So so I had to deal with first of all with all those social problems and then act as the parent as well and then to get the best out of them. But I mean, if if they started from an early age and they had those support. Yeah. So so what Lyle, what Lyle's story, your story, our story, kids that come from homes um, where, you, you know, you're walking down the road and you're hearing gunshots, the amount of ability it takes for a kid to get over something like that and still support and still mm. perform is insane and i don't think we look enough into those type of things sometimes players are just seen as commodities that we can use and you don't look at that social issues but you are 100 percent correct that the amount of of grit that it takes to get over that thing is insane and i would like to dream also and and, and talk to coaches and tell us the role that we play in youngsters is we it has to be bigger than football uh, it has to be um, uh, trying to make a social impact, trying to, um, that we can heal broken homes, but trying to offer that support because the next question is, this lady that's gone and, and played well and overcome so many challenges and the agent comes in at 18 or 19 years old and, and um, snaps his kid up. How important ah. is the right agent in a um, player's life? Well, well, I think the, the first talking point that we had uh, uh, in our discussion tonight was was um, um, Lyle that was left by, uh, on his own by an yeah. agent. So, so I, I, th I think that is that that is that is key, especially when players when players is to get, is to be connected with the with the with the right people that surround you with the right support system, and and mm -hmm. and your agent is probably the most likely person that 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 can put you in that comfort zone. Then for you to go to the next level, I think. And I think when we started our conversation tonight, that, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Are we connecting ourselves with the right people, with sure. the right structures? Because we've there's sure. so many agents, so many people that want to make a quick buck out there, sure. but we're without any regard for the well being of the player. Sure. Connect yourself to the right people. I think that's a message coming out that yeah. um all of fear, Marin is asking, why in amateur football there's no insurance? And I think, all of fear, hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, is that in South Africa, it is very, um, yeah, it is, you want to call it the Wild West. There's not a lot of security for players. There's not a lot of safety for players. We've talked about a lot of stories now. We've, we've brought out a lot of things. And... Uh, that does need to change. That does need to change in South African football, that there has to be a bit more security. And yes, that comes from the structures and our leaders of football. But I think that there's people on the ground that can make a difference. I think there's good people out there that can make a difference. So thank you. I did pronounce it correctly. So sometimes we do look for our leaders to make the change. But sometimes there's people sitting right in front of you that can assist you. There's people sitting yeah. right in front of you that can make a difference. So before you choose agents, before you choose to align yourself, know who the person is. I don't know if you guys want to talk more on that. Um, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to comment on, on Olivia's question about the insurance. Okay. I, I, I don't know which insurance Olivia is referring to, but I know amateur footballers, if you have that playing card, that is, especially with the medical side. So if you get injured, that is your insurance. Because as, as long as you have a SAFA card, any SAFA cards, they are all insured with medical. Thank, thank you, Theo, for covering my back there. I misunderstood the question, but uh, you, 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 you covered my... Uh, yeah, they were making an overlapping run there, but you covered me, you covered me. <laughs> Theo, tell us a bit more about when you used to score goals, but I always know you as a centre, a holding midfielder or a centre back. Tell us about those goal scoring days. I don't remember it. 
Uh, mine actually, actually, if you if you if you if you go in the history of the of the PSL, you'll see that I actually I was a prolific goal scorer and a consistent scorer every year. I never, I never, I only moved to centre back, etc. Late on, and I wow. actually started as an attacking midfielder and as a winger. And so gradually, I could play everywhere. So they moved me all over the show. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so how important, Charlton? Tell me as a question. How important is it for a coach to have belief in young players and show trust in the young player? Lyle, maybe for you first, because Theo is gonna have a a, a lengthy answer. Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I already, I can already see it coming. <laughs> for you, for you, how important is it to have for coach to have belief in young players and show trust? Well, the coach have a lot of favorites. If I'm correct, they'll have favorites. They'll have those that they would want to work harder than the rest. So. The important part when it comes to the youngsters, you have that belief because you can see, I can see he can he got something in him. So you're gonna put all that trust. You're gonna believe that. Look, you can do it. This is what you. This is what I want you to do for me today on on the position that I'm putting you. And I trust that you, for example, striker, uh, 18 year old striker, you throw for example in the PSL. You say, mm. look, um, I'm gonna throw you up front, boy. Today, look, today is your day. You've been very brilliant on training, so you motivate him as much as you can for him to feel comfortable that the coach trusts me, the coach believes yeah. me, and I don't want to let the coach down. So yeah. that's another point where you don't want to let the coach down, to let yourself mm -hmm. down, and you're knowing that's your make and break. Because what that opportunity the coach gives you, if you don't take it, I mean, he's gonna, he will give you another chance, though, but it's not going to come easy. Yeah, I don't even know when. Yeah, I don't even know when. You'll end up sitting in the stand, perhaps. You don't know why. But look, he's not gonna he's not gonna bug about it. He just wants you to think about it. Where yeah. the coaches always say, look yourself in the mirror. So yeah. what's being said, um, you throw the trust in you, you have to believe in it, and you have to take it with both hands. Once you hit the yeah. road running from that game, I can believe you yeah. that's not gonna yeah. stop. So before Theo answers, I I agree with Lyle that um Charlton for me believe giving a young player belief is for me is the most important thing. Um, so that's what I try and instill in my players that I coach, mm. that I teach. Belief in who you are, the belief in the ability that God's given you. That's very important to me. Theo? I think I'm going to answer this, this question in two parts. So the first, the first part of the question is in the young players. I've, I've always believed in the young players and that is how I started. And because I've had success when I started my coaching career at Charlton, when especially working with young players. But for me, the most important thing, especially when I when I think about the young players, is um, I want my young players to work hard. I think the talent for me is always secondary. I, I always believe that if I see a young players working hard, that is the that is always my first point. And then for me, the talent comes afterwards because football is more about the hard work and the talent that will just that will that that comes afterwards. And then the second part, um, Lyle, um, generally coach, coaches, um, if the team isn't doing well, coaches would be a little bit reluctant to, to push too many young players at the same time into the team. So, so although I would, I would love to have as many young players in the team as I can, but it depends on the situation. If the team is doing well, it's very easy to plug in new young players into the team because the team is successful. And if the team is struggling a bit, I think you generally, as a coach, try to have more of your experienced players just to get you out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Very wise. Um, yo, we saw Masters, the two of you saw Masters. You are really excited <laughs> about the show. <laughs> um, you can go two hours with the show, man. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Is there is there something that you want to add um, before we before we go to the to the ad before we go? Is there something that you want to add? Yeah, no, okay, for me, me definitely. Okay, it's okay, up to you, Dal. Let's go. Okay, yeah, I will just say. Um, well, yeah, for the players out there, I would rather say, look, um, discipline, dedication, and believe in yourself. Trust, trust in what you know. You understand? Because 
what other people will tell you, what other people says, you know, they say seeing is believing. So show them that you can do. Because most of the players nowadays, they talk too much. I would say that. They talk, they talk, they talk. But then when you give them the opportunity, there's nothing there. You understand? So rather show them, believe that you can do it before talking. Let the people talk. I would rather mm -hmm. say let the people talk about you. Don't talk about yourself. Because mm -hmm. lots of players I've noticed, um, even at the Fives Arena that I'm, that I'm actually working at now, um, it's happening around. We are here then talking, talking, talking. Then I'd leave to myself, um, have you achieved anything yet for you to talk the way you talk? But I don't, I don't comment. I'm listening. Then I think to myself, look, that's the downfall already. You, 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 like you say, they're chirping. You're talking too much. So rather prove yourself. Put yourself on the map and let everyone take it from there. So I'd say that's what I would advise the youngsters also out there as to start uh, putting their body on the line, you know, um, doing the, the, the right thing that the coaches ask you to do because the coaches won't, you know, um, give you a different disguise of the game. He will definitely tell you what he knows and what you know. So for me is rather be disciplined and respect the game. Respect your opponents, respect your, 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 your fellow teammates as well. So that's about for me for the youngsters out there. Thank you, Lyle. I, I think my thing, my final thing that I would say for those players, for all the players probably in Cape Town is, I think a lot of players have it easy in Cape Town because they, for me it just seems like we are losing too many players now because our players, it's easy for them to stay at home. Because they have a PlayStation, they've got mothers, fathers at work. So they, but they don't put that extra in anymore. It just seems like that. So, so I would, I would suggest that the players, if you want to improve yourself, don't just train with the team. You got you. If you want to improve yourself, you have to do something on your own as well and really, really work hard. But our players, many of our players, they, they don't want to go to training. They rather want to play Sunday league football because then they don't need to go to training during the week. So many of our players are talented footballers. They don't want to put in the hard work. And, and the hard work, that is key. Respect and all those things, they all come together. They, of course, if you work hard, then obviously you have respect for what you are doing. Absolutely. If you work hard, you, you, it's going to be more difficult to throw away what you have. Well put, when you work hard, you respect what you have and I think hard work does bring that and I think my takeaway from that brilliant interview and I thank you guys um, I learned a lot also is perseverance persevering in the right things persevering um, having that attitude of perseverance to continue no matter what but also persevering in 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 things that's going to give you a future after football so persevering yeah. in in having a sort of a dual thing having something that you can fall back on because yes we do know that um, our opportunities rest in other people's hands but um, at the same time opportunities rest in our hands so the better we are prepared the 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 more effective we will be and i i just want to show this um, photo just want to show this photo now that's, this is for you and for me Nas. i'm not excluding you so this photo <laughs> This photo is a wealth, 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 wealth of knowledge. And two of the coaches here are, are second of the log now in the PSL. Yeah. And one coach yeah. came through so many players. Theo, as we know, um, amazing story. Um, promotional players winning the Vodacom. So, but what when I saw this picture, for me, it was it, success will come at different times for different people. You have yep. to persevere in where, where you at. You have to persevere in the impact that you're making. So Theo, I already know you are a success. Lyle, I already know you're going to be a huge success. You are a success already. So yeah, I just want to thank you guys for that. Um, before we end off, um, Theo, maybe you just want to promote what you are doing right now and then we'll go to Lyle. Yeah, um, I've, start, I've started my own um, um, coaching, um, more football, it's more everything about football. I think if you, if you need more knowledge, you can go to um, the um, Impa Football Contest Consultancy. It is on, it's, um, it's, it's, it's not very um, big, the website yet, but we are promoting it a little bit more now. 
Because okay. at the moment, with the lockdown, a lot of things has changed. So until amateur football start again, so I think then probably it will start to kick up again. But I have been doing a lot of individual coaching, focusing on individual, because it is safer in that way. So uh, most of my stuff that I'm doing now is individual coaching, and um, but it's very very popular, and I've got I've got a dedicated I've got a dedicated um, um, bunch of players that I've been coaching a lot. So um, if anyone out there wants to wants to really get the get the best for the coach, get the best for the youngsters individually, get them get them have identified what the weaknesses are, work on those weaknesses extensively, and not in a group environment because in a group it is very difficult to concentrate on a player and to really get him to, to improve on his weaknesses and to work extensively on those. So I do a lot of where I identify the training, I identify the, the weaknesses of the players. I work extensively on the players from scratch. And then obviously, because I've got a lot, I've got, I've learned a lot. I do a lot of research. I go to as, as many, I do as many online thing courses and whatever I can. So that I'm always up to date, but the, the training itself, I always post on Facebook. If you want to follow me on that, you can follow me on Facebook and whatever. There's always videos and video clips. But the individual training, it is very demanding, but it is very, very good. Where are you based? I'm currently working from the from, um, tramway field. I oh. tramway and I'm using other fields, sometimes um, schools that I'm connected with as well. So I use their fields as well. Because it is, I, I I used to I used to have one specific field, but because of the COVID and that, so we've had to little bit, adapt a little bit as well, and not where we don't have too many people at the same time. So therefore, mm. my sessions is more small groups and then individual trainings. So I'm doing a lot of the work at the moment on Tramway's football field. And and that's brilliant because I think from the younger ages, it is more on individual work. It is more on weaknesses. It is more on those details, those finer details. And as you get older, it's the bigger details. But I've known for a while, and that's extremely difficult to do, to focus on the details over a consistent period. I think that's what makes players better. But it is brilliant. Lal, you? I'm at the moment also um, assisting out here at Tuxubert. Um, you have a Y goals five. So the venue that we're at, we at like I'm at the venue now at the moment. And also I've been, you know, we're taking the as a five court. So I'm also here working at the five court here during the evenings. And out with my football, you know, we're still waiting for the correct go ahead at the moment. At the moment I'm still there connected with Ubuntu. But um we're just waiting for the fields to open up because there's some sort of meeting I believe that's happening still. So that's another hiccup. But for now, I'm obviously working on my own at the field here, doing my own personal training and coaching with Exuberant. So I'm at the venue at the moment. How do you spell it? Exuberant. As X. X. Are you ready? X U B E R. Yes. Double O T. Okay. Brilliant. Exuberant, yeah, exuberant soccer schools. Okay. Okay. Guys, that's it. Um, to everybody who locked, to log, 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 logged on, thank you very much. Thank you for all the questions. I think that added, um, that added to the show, that added to the excitement of the show, it added to our conversation. So thank you. Each and every single one for um, for the questions and for logging on, Lyle and Theo. Thank you very much. As out to one footballer said, um, Theo, we hope to see you back in the top flight. We know you're still doing amazing things even right now, but we do hope to see you in the top flight, Lyle. We wish everything of the best for you in your football and your next steps, and we know you're going to be a success. Um, thank you, guys. I think there's a last question from Keelan Madure. I don't know if you want to hold on for that. Yeah, it's fine. No, it's fine. Um, maybe before Keelan, there was a question earlier on how do we know who is the right people, Theo? How would you know? Um, 
I, I, I think the, 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 if, if, you are, if, you, if you have parents and obviously family and if you know football, football people, I think that is your first point of reference if you know football people. Because people know people and I think what we normally find is young footballers, they get approached by someone that says he promises you the world already. And, and, and that is normally, if, if something looks too good to be true, then normally there's something wrong with it. And, and I think that is where many of our footballers find themselves, whether you get unscrupulous agents or people posing as agents that promise you the world and they got to do this and that for you. And, and we know in football, nothing just nothing gets handed to you just like that, um, Charlton. So if you know if you know people, then have those people go and talk to people and find out find out what have those people have done, where have they been, and those are the kind of things. And once you can can connect the dots together, then you will see okay, these people they know exactly what they are talking about. And I was a culprit of that, trying to make quick decisions, too, making quick decisions. Um, just because one person is interested in me, then I'm jumping because I've been waiting for the dream for so long. If you've been waiting for so long, another few months, I'm not going to hurt you. So take your time with decisions. No, like Theo was saying now, no, is there football people? Do you know anything about the people? Have you developed relationships? Look for red flags, have discussions because it's, it's, it's a big decision that you're all making. It's a big decision that you're making. Okay, guys, I actually don't want to leave, but I, I, you know, when the, the football, when the fiber side is getting so liquor, call us as well. This is me and Theo. Okay. I'm not going to go on. Lala's thing was going to go on. They're going to go on for another 30 minutes, and somebody's going to get injured. So, <laughs> so as the, as the, as actually the bookings, I need to swap over now. Where the new guys is coming in, the others need to leave. So it's like that now. And now they always be Lalas, what court am I on? Then uh, are we here at night? And I'm here. And when must I pay you? And ask us. Yeah, but yeah. okay. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. Um, I had such Shut. a fun time. I really appreciate all the wisdom and the knowledge. I'm always, always, I, I know there's so much knowledge in our community. But I'm always amazed when I start having these discussions, how much comes out. So thank you, guys. Um, until next time. Shot, no problem. Okay. See you, Mr. Coach. Thank you, guys. See you guys soon. Okay. All right, Oku. Bye. Shop. See you, Johnny. Okay. See you, Lalas. <laughs>